there is one thing about baseball that separates it from other sports. Nowadays, no two MLB stadiums are alike, all the way down to the dimensions. When you see a ball game, you also get to see a ballpark. So let's critique all 30 of them, as some are better than others, and that's coming up right after this. For this video, we're going from oldest ballpark to newest. Let's do it. Yes, we've told the story of the oldest ballpark in the major leagues many times and all the quirks and charms it has. Personally, I love the seats on top of the green monster. If you look back historically, the large outfield wall used to be covered in ads, which is soon how the players will be. Fenway is, of course, a national treasure and will be continually refurbished and updated until the end of time. Another well-covered field, literally with ivy, Wrigley has seen many improvements over the years and was the last MLB ballpark to add permanent lights in 1988. One distinction it holds is being the only MLB stadium to not have padding on the outfield walls, as it must not be feasible to disturb the ivy. That's really my only criticism of the place. The famous marquee outside was refurbished in 2016 and received a new coat of paint and new LED lights. Still an all-time classic. When you think of old MLB stadiums, you think Fenway and Wrigley. However, Dodger Stadium is on that same plane in terms of legacy. Not only is it the third oldest, but it is the largest in capacity. An older style designed by simply outlasting other parks of its era, Dodger Stadium has held up. The biggest problem I have with this place is the fans getting into dust ups, not knowing how to act in public. I'm not gonna let that define Dodger fans, but y'all need to clean it up. Down the road is Angel Stadium, which features a structure in center field that Noah Syndergaard just learned was a waterfall. Makes sense though, probably with the drought, they don't run it much anymore. Fun fact, the big A sign used to be a support for the scoreboard. Though the stadium is pretty old, it's basically been rebuilt on top of the old one, so this park isn't going anywhere anytime soon. It's not the best park, but not the worst. Here it is, MLB's dinosaur, the last relic of a bygone era where baseball and football coexisted in a stadium about as well as rational takes and Twitter. Not even a hot take, this is the ugliest looking ballpark as it was never designed for baseball and its mega renovation was done for a football team that left. The saddest part is the thing that makes this place great, the fans are so pissed at the team that this is what games look like now. It's just a sad situation all around, that's all I can say. And now the antithesis of Oakland, an older ballpark that has been well maintained and has managed to be considered one of the better looking ballparks despite its age. Renovated in 1999 and 2010, my favorite feature is the fountains in center field called the Waterfall Spectacular. Hopefully they don't have that many mosquitoes in Missouri. The only knock I have on this place is the boring dimensions. However, they fit the overall aesthetic of the ballpark. I definitely need to catch a game here. The first stadium in MLB to have a retractable roof at the touch of the button. Yeah, Olympic Stadium had one, but it sucked. Once the most state-of-the-art park in MLB and possibly the world, it's now showing signs of age. The seats and the rails are fatigued, the features are outdated. It does have a hotel in it, which would be a cool way to watch a baseball game. However, because of its age, there is speculation that the Sky Dome will either get a massive remodel or eventually be replaced soon. I've been here and it was decent, but a little weather. The cougar of MLB ballparks. Hey, you can say the outside of this place is pretty ugly, that's fair, but let's not ignore the inside of this place, which is also horrific. Look, this place gets panned because of the catwalk and sterile environment, but it is better than the alternative, a hot, disgusting outdoor game in the humid air of Southwest Florida. I am impressed that this place has made it 32 years though. Okay, not the ugliest or worst park in the league, but definitely the dumbest name in all of baseball. Ironically, a shameless marketer like Bill Veck would love the moniker. I'll give the Sox credit, the ballpark is being constantly upgraded and more amenities have been outed outside, like a beer garden as well as a diamond-shaped pavilion inside. But those who have been to games here say the environment inside is old and depressing, like a retirement home. Now we're getting to an all-timer. Opened in 1992, it ushered in the retro classic style, but since then it's just become a classic. Also, credit has to be given to Peter Angelos for never selling out the name of this place. Though, I'm starting to think that the fans might be willing to make a trade so that the team will be competitive again. This year, the left field wall received a major alteration, with it being pushed back to Fells Point. 
Still, one of my favorite places to watch a game. Plus, the crab cakes are delicious. You ever share a drink with your friends and talk about the good old days when you used to hang out all night and stay up late? But now, even though you are healthy, the next day after drinking is so rough, you can't even do it anymore. Well, I have a solution for that. Z-Biotics. What you do is drink a bottle of Z before your first drink of alcohol. And that's it. Enjoy your night, have a good time, and wake up ready to go the next day. You see, when you drink, a toxin called acetaldehyde builds up in your gut. It's actually this, not dehydrated hydration that makes you feel like doo-doo the next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break down acetaldehyde. Zbiotics is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic and it's real science that works. I tried it out and let me tell you, I woke up the next day feeling great and not like I just played goalie in a hockey game. So after this video, you can get your first order of Zbiotics pre-alcohol biotic by clicking the link below and using my code 5 points spelled out at checkout. That's zbiotics.com forward slash five points and get 15% off your order. From one skin flint owner to another, Progressive Field started the copycat era of retro classic ballparks you'll be seeing. Feels weird to call them the guardians now, but I'm getting used to it. One of the unique features of Jake uh, Progressive is how they tackled the lighting. 19 individual light towers surround the park and they look like giant toothbrushes. I definitely like the exposed beam style architecture here. This is a good looking stadium. I will give Coors Field credit. In 27 years, at least, they haven't changed the name once. It's your standard HOK sport slash populist retro classic, but with bricks. It's well known that this is the only park where the balls, giggity, are cooled in a fridge before the game to keep the amount of homers down. But since the field area is also huge, they give up a ton of doubles and triples. Additionally, the Rockies give up a lot of talent to other teams in the league. Opened in 1998, Chase Field was the first U.S. stadium to have a retractable roof and a natural grass playing surface. As you can see here, it was closed on the day Google Maps did a flyover. Two cool things about this place, it's been the only home of the D-backs in their entire history, something only the Rays can also boast. And I love the huge wall in center field, just basically saying only real men can go deep in center here. T-Mobile in Seattle has a retractable roof, which looks amazingly huge in proportion to the seating bowl. And in person, the size and scale of the roof truss is breathtaking. At one point when Nintendo owned the place, you could access game features on your DS. Now you can just get overpriced cell phone service. I do like where the park is situated close to the harbor and when it's not raining, you can get stunning evening views of Puget Sound and the city. The only ballpark to feature a pathway between the mound and the plate, a landing strip if you will. Detroit natives will get that reference. One thing I love about Comerica is the unique entranceways located at every corner of the park. One has two giant tigers, another two giant bats, one a Ferris wheel, and one dumps right into the Pepsi Pavilion. The ballpark upgraded this year's food selection. However, they didn't bother upgrading the team. All right, aside from the trash cans, this actually is a really cool field. It used to be the site of Union Station, which explains the huge locomotive out in left field. And that ties in perfectly to how the roof truss system operates on giant sliding rails. I do wish they would bring back Tall's Hill in center. Instead, they replaced it with a telescope. A ballpark where the right field fence serves as a flood wall. The playing surface is well below sea level. Oracle Park features McCovey Cove where baseballs get rescued from drowning. Pretty clever that they did this in order to not have to construct an extended right field upper deck. I really like this field, though there isn't much parking here unless you own a boat. Left field features the humongous Coke bottle and glove and the Chevron ad on the fence which has interfered with batted baseball. This is also where Barry Bonds broke the record for most steroids taken in one season. This has always been my favorite roof design as from just a pure engineering and execution standpoint, it's both beautiful and functional. However, if you look at it from above, it kind of makes the park look a little truncated, but that's, no, nah, that's not important. Other than that, this looks like a great place to catch a game, drink lots of beer and watch a man in a man suit slide down a slide. With PNC Field, I find nothing wrong with it. The thing is, it appeared in the early 2000s where the retro classic look was starting to get a little tired. And you will continue to see this trend throughout the newer ballparks, but I absolutely love the views of the Allegheny and the city's many bridges. 
but the sad part about PNC is that the park is the best thing the pirates have to offer. Wait, another retro classic ballpark located next to a river? You don't say. Site of this year's terrifying Reds Ball Club, Great American Ballpark has some unique features, both pleasing and unpleasing. There's a tiny replica of Crosley Field and a pavilion designed to look like a steamboat in center. However, the front gate on the third baseline is an entranceway that breaks up both the mezzanine and upper deck, reminding me of Michael Strahan's Gap Tooth. Overall, a solid ballpark that might witness 10 wins this year. An homage to the classic jewel box style ballparks of the early 1900s, Citizens Bank features a sharp angular design that is a welcome departure from the standard over computerized look of other retro classic ballparks. I like the roofing element and the park is a remarkable execution of a closed in planned stadium complex. And good job to Philly for cleaning up the south side. It used to be rough down there in the old days of the vet. I still hate the Phillies though. Yes, Petco is a modern retro ballpark, but to me it kind of seems much like a hotel, especially with the sterile buildings outside of the park. I like how they integrated the Western Metal Supply Building, which was slated for demolition had the park not been built in 2004. However, I'm not a big fan of the large concrete light towers, which feature luxury suites. They just look clunky and out of place. Still a good ballpark. A huge step up from the old Bush Stadium, this stadium follows the completely enclosed model. It kind of looks like it's a shopping mall with the seated area carved out in the middle. Ironically, a sprawling residential and shopping area was added across the street on the site of the old Bush Stadium. I've seen many games here. Nationals Park is a testament to overcoming bureaucracy and a rush timeline as it was built like a modular home in different stages. This odd area in center field is actually a shout to the old Griffiths Stadium, whose dimensions were unintentionally constrained because back in the day a property owner didn't want to sell his house for the ballpark. The exterior reminds me of the old RFK, which is still sitting abandoned down the river. Much like Philly, I'm glad they cleaned up southeast as, as back in the day, you wouldn't want to walk around the Navy Yard. This stadium is fire. Ha. Huh. Big improvement over Shea, which had a lot of character and huge rats. I love the Jackie Robinson Rotunda, a tribute to the long gone Ebbets Field. Fun fact, originally the home run Apple was not supposed to come to City Field, but fans protested until they built a new one. Built as a replacement to the beloved old Yankee Stadium, new Yankee Stadium has been a love-hate kind of thing in the Bronx. No question, old Yankee Stadium had to go, but the new one did a good job of capturing the old one's essence, but some fans have complained about it. Wait, Yankees fans complaining about something? The ballpark is fine. They got rid of the bad seats in center, and now the Yankees are winning again, so you won't hear the end of that either. It's pretty tough to make Minneapolis charming, but this ballpark pulls it off. With a large extended roof to protect the fans from snow, Target Field fits your standard retro classic mold. In center is a large structure slash statue which features the old twins characters Minnie and Paul for Minneapolis and St. Paul. The exterior is limestone chosen because they didn't want Target to look like all the other retro ballparks, but it kind of looks like all the other retro ballparks. Actually, it kind of looks like a Target. Finally, something different. The park I thought that would have ushered in an ultra modern era in baseball, well, just hasn't. It once had some interesting features like a sculpture in center, fish tanks behind home plate, a roof that didn't leak, and natural grass. Yes, you heard that right. After building a retractable roof stadium, keeping the grass alive was such a challenge that they actually had to replace it with turf. I still think it's a nice looking ballpark. It's just had its fair share of growing pains. Built to replace Turner Field, which only lasted two decades, the Braves did actually do something smart. They moved the hell out of Atlanta and that awful traffic. Small and compact like Ozzy Albies, the park had the seats placed as close to the field as possible so the players could hear all the taunting from the fans. It also has an oversized roof because the sun in Georgia can be absolutely brutal. This is also one of the most technologically upgraded ballparks, so you can post clips right away. And finally, critiquing the newest MLB ballpark. You know, retro classic ballparks have been around so freaking long, they are already getting replaced. After 25 years in the ballpark, the Rangers blamed the weather for why attendance was so low, so they set out to build a stadium with a retractable roof. Except this one would have synthetic turf and not grass. Okay, so then the ballpark was then 
converted into an oddly configured football stadium. Not much is making sense here, but if you've ever been to Arlington, you'd know a dome was probably the right move. Globe Life got to host the World Series in its first year, not because the Rangers were any good, but because of the pandemic. The park really is pretty though. It has a huge jumbotron and enclosed seating, and of course, sweet, sweet air conditioning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to the end of this critique.